and welcome back. In today's video, we will talk about the organization of the genetic material in the cells, and I will go over everything you need to know before you study mitosis and meiosis. Cells are complex structures, whether they are prokaryotic or eukaryotic, they are packed with molecules. And one very important molecule that we will talk about today is DNA. So when a cell divides, it cannot just pinch in the middle like this and split into two. The genetic material, that DNA, has to be equally distributed into the two daughter cells in such a way that they are identical to the mother cell. The only way that could be possible is if the DNA first replicates itself in the mother cell so that during division, each set or each copy ends up in a different daughter cell, like this. This is why, to understand cell division, first we have to know how the genetic material is organized in cells. You're familiar with the helical structure of DNA, but in this loose form, DNA cannot fit inside the nucleus of eukaryotic cells because the DNA of eukaryotic cells are very long. So for it to fit, it has to fold. And to fold, special proteins called histones are used. The DNA wraps itself around the histones forming nucleosomes. The nucleosomes pack together one more to produce a fiber known as chromatin. Even though DNA at this point is packed with histones, chromatin is the loose form of DNA. And DNA will exist as chromatin almost throughout its entire life cycle. In the chromatin stage, it is not condensed enough to be seen under the microscope. When a cell is ready to divide, chromatin further folds and loops and is packaged into chromosomes. In this supercoiled stage, chromosomes become visible under the microscope and we can clearly identify and distinguish the different chromosomes within the nucleus. Somatic cells versus gametes. Somatic cells are body cells. For example, in animals, all the cells of the body, like the skin, heart, blood, and so on, they're all somatic cells. Then what are gametes? Gametes are the cells involved in the sexual reproduction of organisms. For example, again, in animals, egg and sperm are the female and male gametes. So, how many chromosomes are there in somatic cells and how many in gametes? Each eukaryotic species has a characteristic number of chromosomes in the somatic cells. For example, in humans, there are 46 chromosomes. Gametes have one set of 23 chromosomes. So why? Why do gametes have half the number of chromosomes that somatic cells do? That is because in fertilization, when an egg and a sperm fuse, the maternal set, maternal set meaning the chromosomes that are found in the egg, the maternal set of 23 chromosomes found in the egg will fuse with the 23 chromosomes that are found in the sperm. Together, 23 plus 23 makes 23 pairs of chromosomes or 46 chromosomes. And what is the product of the fertilization? A zygote. The zygote now has 46 chromosome and it will divide and keep dividing to form the organism. Every single cell within that organism has to have the complete set of 46 chromosomes. And that's why mitosis, which is the division of the genetic material to form two identical daughter cells Will take place. What about the gametes? How do they form? The gametes are the product of a special kind of division 
known as meiosis, that splits the amount of the genetic material in half. And we'll talk more about it in a dedicated video. So now, what do the terms diploid and haploid mean? All the somatic cells are diploid. D or di, it means two. So two sets of chromosomes, we refer to it as 2n, where n is the number of chromosomes in one set. Gametes are haploid because they have one set of chromosomes, meaning they only have n. Let's give some examples. Tomatoes have 2n equals 24 chromosomes. What does this mean? This means that the diploid cells of the tomato have two sets of 12 chromosomes for a total of 24 chromosomes. 2 times 12 is 24. Let's take another example. Fruit flies. Fruit flies have 2n equals 8 chromosomes. Again, this means that n is 4. So in the haploid cells, the fruit flies have four chromosomes, whereas the diploid cells contain two sets of four, which is eight chromosomes. And this is it for today's video. I hope you found it useful. Don't hesitate to give me a thumbs up and also leave kind comments. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.